Hey, what's up, everybody? I've been working on my MacBook Pro, editing videos in Final Cut Pro, and I wanted to see about picking up a 2024 Asus G14, which has a 4070 card, 32 gigs of RAM, and a terabyte of storage, and seeing if I could swap my workflow over to Resolve. As some of you may know, I have another channel called Linux, by the way, and it's pretty good, but if I post non-Linux stuff on there, I get a lot of thumbs down and stuff. As part of this transition, A, one terabyte isn't enough storage, and B, it's not quite as fast. And so today I have a brand new Samsung drive I'm gonna put in there, and I'm gonna show you the whole process of unscrewing the back and putting the drive in, and show some benchmarks of the before and after and how it works for video editing. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap the SSD to a four terabyte Samsung drive. It's the 9100 model, and it says it gets like 14,800 megabytes per second throughput, and so that should be more than enough for video editing, and it might beat the MacBook, so I wanted to go ahead and check it out. So let's go ahead and check out what's in the box here. So in the box, open it from the side, pop out. Here we go. Actually get a little cover here. Boom, Samsung drive. You can see it's just a standard M2 format. You can see we've got the Samsung drive here. It's standard M2 drive, NVMe. And it's also got a lot of chips on there, which uh, makes sense for a four terabyte drive and the throughput it has, pretty sweet. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and unscrew the mini screws there. Uh, they're Torx number six. And one thing to note is that the top and the middle rows are longer than the bottom. So make sure you separate those out appropriately and don't mix them up. Once we get all the screws out and put them in our tray, uh, what we can do is we can go around with a plastic piece and sort of pry it open very gently. And so you just wanna loosely basically undo each clip so you don't break it, it's very thin and then slide it around the bottom and it should just start coming off. If you feel resistance, double check that you've got every single screw because you could have missed one or something. Uh, and then it will just pop right off once it's done. Now we're done with the Torx bit and we got to switch our screwdriver to a Phillips head bit. And so just swap that around. Uh, I'm using the framework screwdriver here, by the way. So if you've ever bought a framework laptop, they include one with that plastic piece and then the swappable head, same exact sizes here. And so all we do is just unscrew the M2 drive, and then this is gonna pop right out. And the important thing is, is that there's a heat pad and there's a sleeve. And so what you wanna do is, is make sure that you put the new drive inside the sleeve. And so that will just give it a little bit better thermal performance. And since the laptop ships that we might as well use what they shipped with. So we're gonna go ahead and put that back in here and just slide it on and then slide it in. And then we actually screw it in with that cover in place and then everything looks good and we'll put the case back on. The case itself is pretty thin. I mean, that's how they make thin and light laptops. So just make sure as you're doing this, you're doing it with a very light touch. And so I'm just gently putting it on there. I'm not forcing anything. And I'm gonna switch my bit back to the Torx bit and I'm gonna put the screws in, remembering to put the shorter screws near the front and then the longer screws in the middle and the last row. One of the most common mistakes people can do at this part is that they could try and put the screws in, but maybe they're not totally aligned and you might try and force it in. If you do that, you can strip the screw, strip the screw hole, whatever. So do it gently, it should go in naturally. And there we go. So it's all assembled and ready to go. And now we can see if it boots up. And the moment of truth is here. So I've hit the power button and it looks like it is starting up. So there we go, we got the ROG logo. Everything's looking good and there's Windows. I went ahead and I started installing that. And let's go ahead and check that out at the end and see how the performance is. Now we're fully rebooted, fully updated. Let's go ahead and round a disk benchmark. You can see here as we look at the numbers, some of the gains are fairly marginal. Uh, so we have 6390 versus 7106 for the read sequentials. But we did get about a 23% uplift with the 5470 on the original one versus the 7059. And so I'd look for that to have also more sustained performance, which might be beneficial in that video editing workload. For the random read test, that went down pretty significantly from 619 to 440. So I wouldn't have expected that, uh, but our writes went up. And so not sure what would have caused that. It does run five tests at a gigabyte each. Uh, so it does try to get an average of those and make sure we smooth any bumps or anything. But I would say that for a $500 disc, that's not hugely impressive, but I did need the four terabytes I do think the sustained performance while editing videos continuously is gonna make a difference here. And Samsung has uh, more durability in terms of the TBW numbers. 
along with it has like secure race and all that stuff built into the Samsung Magician software. Five hours later, we have DaVinci Resolve done with optimizing the AI plugins, which is not bad because we do want those optimized and every system's different. With DaVinci Resolve loaded, I can drag my OBS screen captures in. They're AV1 slash MKV, so they're not proxy, they're not optimized, and you actually can't drag them into Final Cut Pro without running them through like FFmpeg first. And that will give you kind of an idea of their performance here. And so you can see that they load up quickly. And I think that's due to the IO because on my other setup, it was running a little slower than that. And so I can scrub quick. I'm getting the previews quick and it's doing a ton of IO to sort of get through those files and get some screenshots and everything and show it in that window. And so that's all looking really good here. So let's go ahead and grab a clip and throw it in the timeline and see how long that takes. Okay, so I put it in there and I can immediately play back and scrub through it. And again, this is not optimized media, so that's pretty good. And everything seems responsive. Uh, I can click through everything and there's no lag or processing happening that's slowing me down. Let me just do something here like add a title or a bumper here. Okay, where it's as text and yeah, there we go. Just drag it right on and see how that plays back. And okay, cool. Yeah, so uh, you know, there's a couple of frames dropping here and there, but that's also due to the fact that I am also capturing this with OBS while I'm running DaVinci Resolve. And so that definitely has an impact on it. So it's always fun when we have a laptop where we can change out the pieces or upgrade things. And the Asus G14 makes it really easy to swap out the SSD. So I was able to take it from one terabyte to four terabyte. Unfortunately, because it's PCIe 4.0, it means that I'm always going to max at that seven gigabytes a second until they release an edition with PCIe 5.0. But when they do that, I can take out this hard drive and just put it in the new one. So I'm kind of already ready to go and maybe I'll check out the new 2025 models. In terms of the MacBook and Final Cut versus DaVinci Resolve on the G14, both seem to work well at the 4K level. The G14, you can hear the fans more. On the Mac, you can't really hear the fans. And on the Mac, I'm getting better battery life. So you can edit in the Mac, depending on what you're doing for seven to 10 hours. Whereas I think I only get roughly three to four hours. I have to do more testing on the G14 if I'm doing a lot of heavy editing. But I'm also doing a lot of things like with OBS on there and screen capturing at the same time. And so the GPU is always on which is a big difference in my workflow. In terms of cost though, the Mac I'm using costs well over $5,000 and the G14 I got in Craigslist for $1,200 and then I threw in the hard drive for 500 bucks, but you don't have to throw in the hard drive. So value wise, the G14 for making videos and doing it cost effectively is really good. And you have a lot of optionality. So you can take DaVinci Resolve, run it on the G14, but you don't have to do it on a portable laptop. You could also take that and then build a desktop rig and get a 5090 in there and really get all the bells and whistles and horsepower and cooling performance that you need to have a super efficient slick workflow. And you can also install other things like games on there. So it doesn't have to be a single purpose PC. And that's where a lot of the desktop PCs shine is they can do everything and they're open and uh, you can do a lot more things totally unrestricted. Would I recommend this upgrade? I would say that getting a super fast PCIe 5 NVMe sets you up for the future, but you can definitely save money going with a cheaper drive. However, in my case, I do like the Pro Series. I like their durability. I like their security and I trust Samsung with my data. And so I have no problem just paying the 500 bucks and getting a good drive. And then I can swap it to the next laptop whenever I get that. I put the Amazon links below. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I'll make more of these. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Later.